All right, guys. So let's go over metabolic alkalosis. So we went over metabolic acidosis, um, probably in the video right before this. So if you haven't watched that yet, check that one out just to make sure you kind of understand the difference between the two. Um, so we'll get into it. So the boards isn't mostly going to ask you questions about like these two conditions by themselves. It's more like a patient's diabetic becomes ketoacidotic. That's metabolic acidosis with alkalosis. We got electrolyte imbalances. So like someone on diuretics and stuff like that could have an over excretion of, you know, potassium and stuff like that causing problems. That's kind of what it is. It's more of like kind of understand that this is what's happening as a result of something else. So what is metabolic alkalosis? So remember when alkaline things happen, that means the blood pH is increasing, becoming more basic. So there's alkalemia in the body, which is a blood pH above 7.45. Remember our normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. The body does not like to move outside that range or else it tries to kill itself pretty much. So we got to keep it in that range. And again, this happens secondary to something else. It's not by itself. Something has to cause it. So what causes it? So we got an inadequate excretion of bicarbonate ions. So it's HCO3 minus. Um, and so that's going to make the body more alkaline, more basic. Or it's an excessive excretion of hydrogen ions, which means that we're getting rid of the things that make things acidic. So then we're going the other way and we're going basic. So either one of those things, essentially what's happening is that all of the basic base you know, alkaline chemicals and all the ions stay in the body and all of the acidic ones leave. So then we become more alkalotic. So this can happen due to renal dysfunction. That's why our kidneys are really important. And that's why if somebody starts going to kidney failure, this is why they could end up dying because all of their electrolytes are bad and all imbalanced and everything. We got to be nice to our kidneys, let those little nephrons work. We love our kidneys, keep them working. Diuretics can cause this as well. So like Lasix and that's like the main one that most people are on the water pills and everything. Um, be careful with those that can cause electrolyte imbalances causing problems such as metabolic alkalosis. So we want to make sure we're not over excreting any of our electrolytes and everything because we need those like potassium, sodium, calcium. Those are all really important. Um, excessive sweating, secondary to increased activity or some other thing. So think of like, that's why they make you take like Gatorade or Propel or some sort of drink with electrolytes in it. Once you work out and sweat a lot, that's because we need to replace those electrolytes. So then we don't have any sort of systemic problems such as metabolic alkalosis. Um, and that's due to the fact that a lot of these problems are that we're losing all of our electrolytes. So we need to keep our electrolytes in balance. So that's why electrolyte imbalances can cause these problems. We can also see problems with electrolyte imbalances with like cramping and stuff like that. Um, so we want to make sure we keep everything at the level it's supposed to be. We're not getting rid of too many electrolytes and then decreased gastric acid. Remember our stomach is super acidic. So about like two on the pH scale, uh, if we're losing a lot of our acid in our stomach, that could also affect our blood. Because remember, there's like blood vessels in the stomach itself. And it's like the exchange of hydrogen ions, proton pumps, all of that fun stuff in the stomach. Not too much to get into the specifics. Just understand if we start losing our stomach acid, we start losing our acid in general, causing our cells to become more basic. So this can happen either due to vomiting, so vomiting up your stomach acid, or if you're having nasogastric suctioning due to having an NG tube placed for some reason whatsoever, this could cause it as well. And then bulimia, because if you're throwing up again, this could cause electrolyte imbalances. That's why we want to make sure we're keeping everything down and we're not losing our stomach acids. So what does it look like when we see somebody who has this? They're going to have induced respiratory acidosis. So that's why they're going to try to get themselves more acidic by inducing respiratory acidosis. So that bradypnea, um, bradypnea, sorry. And then uh, hypoventilation. So we're going to try to, you know, get as much, let that, um, the hydrogen ions build up and everything in our system so that we can become more acidotic instead of going alkalotic. And so this is just to kind of where we've overshot one direction, we're going to overshoot the other direction to hopefully end up somewhere in the middle. Uh, we'll see again that vomiting, diarrhea, stuff like that, uh, anything where we're getting rid of all the electrolytes in our body, either out one end or the other, is going to decrease our um, electrolytes. That's why when someone's really sick, they try to make sure you get some Gatorade in them to bring their electrolytes back up. We're going to see hypoxemia. So that would be the low um, uh, oxygen levels in the blood. 
which again is going to cause other problems. We'll see arrhythmias because of the electrolyte imbalances. Remember, you need like calcium and stuff to make the heart work, our proton pumps and everything, and the, you know, what's that called? The sodium potassium pump. We need all those to, you know, have nerve conduction and everything. So we'll see problems in the heart. We're going to see tetany. So that's where we have the, the fused tetanus, the cramping of the muscles. Again, we need calcium to be able to have muscle contractions for, you know, the power stroke, all of that fun little monofilament stuff. Um, don't worry about that, but it's necessary. And that's why we have cramping. And then we'll see some seizures due to the electro electrolyte imbalance and some alterations in cognitive status. So they look like kind of out of it. You're like, you good? And they're like, uh, like they just don't look good. And then hypokalemia, this is the big one. So the main thing that we're losing when it comes to electrolytes is um, potassium. So if we're seeing a loss of potassium, we're gonna have weakness, myalgia. So just general fatigue and just, we're not looking too good. Again, we'll see polyuria. So that would be somebody's on diuretics or something like that. They're peeing a lot. We're losing electrolytes that way. And again, like metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis is fatal if left untreated. So not good at all. So how are we treating it? So we're not really treating it ourselves. We're sending them to like, you know, EMS services because they could end up in that fatal position. You don't want that. Um, and so what we're, what they're going to do, I say we, it's what the people are going to do at the hospital. They're going to give them potassium chloride to correct the electrolyte imbalances. Cause remember potassium is the one that's being over excreted, which is going to cause problems for everything else. So not good. Uh, we're going to just give them more potassium and hope everything goes well. And we're letting somebody who's qualified to do this because you give someone too much potassium, they could stop their heart. So we don't want to do that. So key words, or if we see any sort of hypoventilation, bradypnea, so bradypenia, or respiratory acidosis, those all go hand in hand with those. Um, that would be indicating that we're in metabolic alkalosis. I know it's confusing. Respiratory acidosis goes with metabolic alkalosis. It's, I'm sorry, I didn't make the rules. I'm sorry that this is hard. I get confused as well. Um, but if we see that, we're thinking metabolic alkalosis, um, any sort of electrolyte imbalances, specifically potassium with hypokalemia problems, like that lethargy, alternate, altered cognitive status, all of that stuff, not good. Alkalemia, remember that's the blood pH above 4.5, well, 7.45, not good. Um, if we see they're taking a diuretic, that could cause this as well due to the, the over excretion of electrolytes. And that's why with diuretics, you see electrolyte imbalances is a big problem and side effect. We don't want that to happen. And then if we see a patient that's continually vomiting or has diarrhea, that would be a problem as well. That could cause respiratory alkalosis. So sample question, a physical therapist assistant is treating a patient outpatient facility for pain in their right shoulder. The patient has a past medical history of two weeks in the hospital following an episode of metabolic alkalosis, which of the following would have most likely caused this condition. One, patient entered respiratory alkalosis. Two, patient had a blood pH of 7.4. Three, patient was recently prescribed Lasix. Or four, patient had a blood glucose level of 640. That's really high. I'll give you guys a second to think about this. All right, guys, so the answer is the patient was recently prescribed Lasix. So remember, one of the things that can cause metabolic alkalosis is um, if somebody is on a diuretic because it's going to cause electrolyte imbalances. So this is what would most likely cause this condition based on the answers that we've been given due to the fact it's going to cause problems with potassium and electrolytes and all of that stuff. And it's just not going to be good for the patient. So that would definitely induce metabolic alkalosis. But let's go through the other ones. Patient entered respiratory alkalosis. Remember... Out, metabolic alkalosis is associated with respiratory acidosis. So they're not, they're not the same. They're not, they're not buddies when it comes to that. So that's incorrect. Patient had a blood pH level 7.4. Remember our normal range is 7.35 to 7.45. That patient's in the perfectly normal range. Um, so a normal blood pH would not cause somebody to go into metabolic alkalosis. So therefore number two is incorrect. And then P number four says patient had a blood glucose of 640. This is really, really high, which would cause them to go into hyperglycemia, which would cause them to go into meta into uh, metabolic ketoacidosis. 
So a high blood glucose would cause metab- like diabetic ketoacidosis and everything like that. That's associated with acidosis, which would be metabolic acidosis, which is not alkalosis. So I hope you followed along with that. Hyperglycemia would re- result in metabolic acidosis. So I hope that this was helpful in explaining that the, this, these two are a little bit confusing, but I hope after this, you have a better idea and kind of understand how the boards would ask this. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.